The machine we'll be using today is a ShopSaber IS series CNC router in a 4x8 configuration. It's one of our machine tool grade CNC models and here's what that means. It means the frames are all made out of structural steel, they're all welded, all the machining's done on an aerospace mill. We use precision ball screws and X, Y, and Z axis. We have precision contour guide rails. We have our Super Z system. All of those things go into a machine tool grade CNC router. A couple options are required for this specific application. One is actually, of course, a vacuum table, and because we're using fixturing, I prefer the phenolic option. The other is part locator pins, and here's why. Part locator pins are the key to quick changeover, so I can put that pod board on here, do my machining, take it off, switch back over to nested base manufacturing with very, very little changeover. And of course, these applications use a lot of tools, so it always makes a lot of sense to have an ATC, an automatic tool changer, on the machine. So that's why we've got it. And of course, we're going to use this machine for panel processing, so it has to have a dust dock because it picks up sawdust so well. What ties all this technology together is the simplicity of the ShopSaber CNC machine control. A lot of our customers with zero CNC experience make their first part within a couple hours. Before we start cutting, let's go in the office and let's take a look at the software. I frequently hear from CNC users, I know my machine will make that part if I could just figure out how to hold it. So what we're really talking about is fixturing. And if you're doing cabinet parts or panel processing, we're using sheet goods, flow through works great. You put a piece of MDF on the table, um, we pull a vacuum through it, it holds the parts now. But when you get into other things, where maybe solid wood parts, that doesn't work so well, so we have to have some different strategies to use. What I wanted to do is to create a video to show you how to make up what I call a pod table, which is a fixture for your machine to help you do those special setups. What I had envisioned is a pod table that was roughly two feet by four feet. Now here's why. That lets me use that front vacuum zone on the table. And so uh, and for most of the parts I'm making, that's fine. Remember, this is all scalable. So if you needed something larger, you can use the same idea. All right, now I didn't want to take the spool board off every time I put this on, so I took my normal spool board and just actually cut it two feet back. So I could just take the front end of the spool board off and set my fixture board on there. So that's, that's where I really started. Now, um, here's what I wanted to be able to do. It's real common now for pods, and this is a pod from our friends over at Better Vacuum Cups, and these fit in a grid, and it's a really easy way to fixture things. So this sets in a grid, and vacuum pulls through there and you set your part on there. All right, well, here's what makes that work. First off, this pod, this is 120 millimeters square, okay? Basically, the grooves in the table that this fit in need to be a quarter inch wide and 7.5 millimeters deep, okay? And the, the actually pattern needs to be on 30 millimeter centers. So, so what I wanted to do first was to create that grid and then within every 120 millimeter square I need a vacuum access port that goes underneath so vacuum comes through there and I have to have a little plug to put in there to stop that up. So that's the idea behind this. So let's get started with how we actually got this concept together. What you see on the screen here is actually a 3D model of this concept I've got. And, and uh, first off, the material is Baltic birch. It, it doesn't have to be that. I selected that because the quality of that material is good. There's not many voids in it and uh, one inch is a nice thickness to do this. It stays flat. Now you'll see some holes here. Well, there's one, two, three. Well, what are those? Well, those are pins. My machine has part locator pins, so I can raise those pins up and drop that board down on those pins, and then I always know where it is. So that's part of that quick changeover. So it's real easy for me to grab this, put it on the table line, put those pins, and I know it lines up, all right? So that's where that came from. Now, the grid that you see on here, these grooves, so what we talked about earlier, they're a quarter inch wide, 7.5 millimeters deep, and they're 30 millimeters on center. And once again, that's to make it fit the pods themselves, and then these are ports. And so within every 120 millimeter uh, square, there's, there's a vacuum port, and these go underneath. And those ports have the plugs in them. And then if we look at the underside of this, you see there's some machining on the back, uh, and that helps distribute vacuum to those ports from the table underneath. Now, I've also got a groove here for gasket, but I don't think I'm going to have to use that. I went ahead and incorporated it into the design, but it turned out I, I, I didn't really need it, so I actually didn't cut that. All right, so that's basically the concept of, of a pod table. 
What you see here is an actual CAD drawing, and the geometry came from the drawing that they make the table with. I just got rid of stuff I didn't need. Here's what I'm really interested in. First off, the, this red rectangle here is the, uh, the vacuum zone. That's the second one, and this one right here is the first one. So that kind of gives you an idea of where we're at. And so I wanted, I wanted a seam between the two panels to be down the center of that. So that helped me define what the outline of the pod table itself was. So I need that. And then I needed to know where the, uh, the actual pinholes were. So that's where those came from. So the first thing I'm going to do is make that panel with those holes in it. Now, what these represent here are where they actually machined the grooves in the table, in, the, in your vacuum table. And um, I don't really need those. I just, I just need an idea of what the parameters were because we're going to do our own grid on top. And, you know, it's a good question. You might say, well, why don't you just do the grid that fits the pods um, as your standard table? Well, the problem with that is our design, the way we do our vacuum tables, we've got about 50% more exposure of vacuum to the underside of the MDF, and it holds parts better. If I, if I go ahead and make that a pod table, the parts aren't going to hold as well because I just don't have an efficient flow of vacuum. So it makes much more sense to, to do it this way. All right, now that we understand that, let's look at what it takes to actually do the rest of the table. I really created the 3D model of our pod table just for visualization so it'd be easier to understand what we're trying to do here, but I'm actually going to toolpath it in VCAR Pro. And, and so I really just need some simple geometry. Let's take a look at what's in this drawing. For one, here's the perimeter. So one setup is actually going to be cutting the perimeter and those holes. So we're actually going to go on a machine and cut that out, and then we're going to take that board over and make sure it lines up with the pins in the table. And you might even do that first cut on a piece of inexpensive scrap material to verify the holes line up correctly. In my case, they worked out pretty good. Then I'm going to actually cut that panel out of Baltic birch. Okay, then the next setup, I'm going to do machining from the top. Well, what's that going to be? Well, you'll see these circles on here, and there's actually two circles. One, one is a hole, and those actually go almost through the material. That's vacuum ports. All right, and then there's actually a larger hole that's a counterbore, and that creates that little shelf for that plug to sit on. So that's, those are done from this side, and then these are the actual lines uh, for the vacuum grooves or the vacuum channels that the pods fit in and gasketing for that matter. And all we have to do is cut down the center of those with a quarter inch bit and everything works. So, so that's basically what's required. Now you see some more geometry. We don't really worry about this. I put that on there for reference. That's the perimeter of the vacuum area on the table. But now these are important right here. You see, you see four of these. These are actually, this is a groove on the back side. And the idea is to connect all those and then then they intersect the grooves in the table, and that's how vacuum flows through all those, those ports. So that's really what we need. So now let's take this drawing, and uh, we'll output it, and now we'll bring it, be able to bring it in to VCAR Pro. In our first setup, we're going to cut the perimeter of the pod table, and we're going to machine the hole. So let's take a look at that simulation. So the first thing, we'll cut the outside. Get rid of the scrap, and then we'll drill the holes for the pins. And there they are. So that's our first step. Then we take this to the machine, and then we position on the table using the part locator pins. Okay, here's our first setup in VCAR Pro, and this is going to be for machining the top surface. And let's look at the setup first. It's set up right now as a single, single side, and we'll take care of that later. Uh, basically, I define the material as 49 by 30 by 1 inch thick, and we're touching off to the machine bed itself. Okay, so what do we need to machine? Well, we've got some holes, so let's take a look at one of those a little closer. There's a hole there, and that hole's actually gonna go all the way through. It's not really gonna go through. We'll go through about seven eighths because it intersects a slot on the back. So that's actually a vacuum port. So that's what gets vacuum from the table to the top of our pod table. And then these green circles here, those get machined, those are counter bores, and that's where those plugs fit down in. So we're gonna have those, so I probably need to cut those. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut the grooves in the top, and that's what these lines are here. So those are all going to be just a quarter inch bit cutting on the line, 7.5 millimeters deep. And the lines you see right here, don't, they don't get cut in this setup. So basically, we've gotta cut the holes and cut the grooves. Let's look at simulation, I'll show you how that worked out. So we'll go over here to 3D, and we'll go to simulation. And so the first thing I did was, and I just called them plugs, that's these holes. 
saw machine those. Okay, then I came back in and I did these counterboards and I did them in two steps. I could have pocketed those, but I actually just used counterboards because I could use the same geometry. So that creates that. Then I cut the grooves in one direction. And the grain direction was running long grain. If you, you, it'll chip less if you'll do these first and then do the ones in long grain. Okay, so that created the grooves in the, the other axis. And then finally we've got the perimeter. So that's all our grooves for the pods. And then I took a V-bit and actually just went, to, went down the center of those to kind of deburr those just slightly. And you won't really be able to see that process, but that's what it did. So that took care of all the machining we needed on the top side. I actually added another tool path right here, and that was I, I wanted to make sure that the bottoms of these were really flat, and so I went ahead and put a pocket tool path in there on all those. You probably wouldn't have to do that. I just thought it made it look cleaner. So that's our that's our that's the top side of the board. Now let's take a look at what, how we go from there to do the back side. Now we need to flip this panel over and actually cut those slots in the back. Let me show you how to do that in VCAR Pro. Let's go back up to the file here and let's say instead of a single side, it's double sided. So now I have two sides and, we'll, and when I flip it, I'm flipping it this way. That's what this selects right here and we'll say okay. All right, so then if I want to come over here, there's the back side. And you notice you see, you see the geometry on the front, but it, you can't really select it. So what I want to do is I want to take that geometry. Uh, so here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to go back to the front side. I need two things. I need actually these, the slots themselves. Whoops, I'll just select those. And I need that for reference. And I'm going to say right click copy. Then I'm going to the back side and I'm going to hit paste. Now there's the geometry that I need to cut those slots, but where is it? You see now, here's a consideration is now, it has to line up. All right, well, how are we gonna do that? Well, what do we know? We know that this is the perimeter of the panel. In fact, why don't we do this? Let's just group all this together first. So we're gonna chain that together so it becomes one object. So if I move it around, no problem. Well, there's another thing I have to do. Remember, this is back side, so this has to be flipped. So I'll come over here and just flip it horizontally. Okay, now, now it's reversed. Okay, well what else do I know? Well I know that this is a corner here and what I'd like to do is I'd like to have this at zero, zero and then this corner lines up with my pins. So that makes, it, that makes the front and back line up. Well, how in the world do you do that? Well, this is actually pretty easy because it's got, uh, it's a rectangular part. You're not always that fortunate. Let's say that this was out here and, and I wanted to move that. Uh, let me show you a little trick. I can create a circle. And wherever I pick it, I'm going to pick that corner, and I'm going to make sure it's bigger than the object. Okay? So there's my circle, right? Now I'm going to select that circle and the objects inside, and I'm going to say move those to where the center of the object is at zero. Zero. and it automatically makes that corner line up. And then we can just get rid of it. So that's the way, sometimes it's hard to figure out how to move a particular point in VCAR Pro to another point. That's a, that circle is a great way to do it. In our case, we could have basically just selected this, gone over here and say, give me the, just this absolute position should be zero, zero. So that's another way of doing that. But you don't always have the luxury of having that uh, rectangular. And then, so let's take this, all right. And so now, what have we got here? Well, I've got four, four pockets, so let's just go over here and, and we'll close that. So we're gonna do a pocket. Uh, we're gonna go about 3 16th thick. We'll probably just do that one pass. And we'll select that, and that, and whoops, get that one and that one. And Calculate it. And there's our tool pass for the back side. So now we're able to use uh, 
one VCAR profile to actually create both sides and to use our part locator pins to get everything to line up from front and back. So that's really what's required. Now let's go out in the shop and let's actually make this table. Our pod table project came out great, and you can tell from the video there are so many different applications that this opens up for fixture on your CNC router. In fact, our next video, we're actually going to make a solid wood part using this table, so be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.